Uh, good evening. You know, we already wrapped up today. Did you have something to add? No? All right, just wanted to make sure. Hey, Stuart here. Let's go find out how's the hike on the Skokie Loop. <laughs> and let's hope the third time is the charm. Fish Creek Trailhead, of course, down at the bottom of the hill. And the first bit of this hike's on this old road. It's a road the ski hill uses. Last time I was here, there was <laughs> some squeaky old backhoe coming up the whole time. Uh, I can hear vehicles over at the ski area and stuff. No big deal. It's interesting because there is parking up here, but they just don't want you up here. So, not gonna show you much of this. If I see something, you'll see it. Until we get to the trailhead proper. Up to Baker Lake tonight. Merlin Meadows on night two, which will be my birthday. And uh, out on day three. The perfect Skokie Loop. Behind me there, you can see some people. A little shout out to Elvis and Terry. Hope I'm right. Oh, I wish you'd write these things down. Out uh, as a foursome this time. I saw them two years ago here. Ha! Or was it three now? I don't know, but uh, yeah, they were doing sawback from up here down to Lake Louise. No, from, sorry, down to Llewellyn Lake in that way. So funny to run into them again today. That's hilarious. Hilarious. Well, it's not hilarious. There you go. This constant uphill road. I gotta be there soon. Famous last words. Finally, the end of the road, literally. Some Parks Canada trucks here. Some other vehicles. This is the little area I was talking about. You know, it's a shame this wasn't bigger. Take all that road walking away. Now, yeah, I'm not going to mind it on the way out, that's for sure. But uh, it's all Parks crew, looks like. Well, that's why it's reserved. I sit here for a sec. Take a little well-earned break, and then get up and hit the trail proper. Okay, this can be confusing if, uh, if you don't know where you're going. So at the bridge and the hut, look right. And up there on the hillside is the trail sign. You're heading right up there into that sand of trees. Well, here's where I second guess the map. <laughs> so when I tracked this the last time, it's just around 13 kilometers each way. Just a little over, according to Gaia. I'm at less than four, and it says seven seven. So that would put me in less than twelve. So let's go. Well, let's go see what happens. Seven seven. It'd be awesome. Views opening up finally. Redoubt Mountain. So. Finally should have some nice views to show you. It's just been me grunting uphill. <laughs> I don't call that entertainment or anything really, except me grunting uphill. So anyway, up here, there's a nice little bridge up here somewhere. I'm gonna find it. Oh, what's that? What's this? Are you a porcupine? Hey, I think that's a porcupine. Okay, let's proceed with caution. Yeah, waddle on up the trail. Go ahead, I'll let you go. You're walking about as fast as I am now. And, yeah, <laughs> that's me right about now. He'll scurry off and then I can continue safely. Never approach porcupine. Come on, buddy. Thirsty. All right, there he goes. There's the bridge I remember. Gonna water up a little bit, have a little snack, and then head up toward the halfway hut. And on to Boulder Pass, Tarmigan Lake. Stunning area. But first I do need to water up and uh, have a little break right here. Lovely spot for a little break. 
I needed it. This little peak in sun now, which is beautiful. <laughs> Weather Network said mostly sunny. <laughs> uh, with a little bit of clouds. All I've seen is clouds. So, uh, you know, the mountains have their own weather. As I've said before, but she's a little nippy. So when you stop for a break like that, you're layering up, which is a good thing. And then, of course, you take it down and put that cold backpack on your wet, sweaty back. Isn't this fun? <laughs> oh, all right. Let's go see some stuff. Halfway hut is just up here. Hidden Lake. Very close. Be a good one-nighter for the one-night stand playlists. This is new. Yeah. This uh, was not here the last time I was here. Very cool. I'm assuming they flew that in <laughs> because that's a pretty big piece of piece of triangular metal. Very cool. All right, halfway hut. Heading to Boulder Pass, Ptarmigan Lake. There are no distances or mileages, just directions. So we know we're going that way. I actually just saw somebody at the top of, of uh, Boulder Pass. Uh-oh. Somebody left their bear spray here. Oh boy, well, it's unlikely they'll need it, but hopefully they're traveling with somebody who has their own canister. By the way, if you do find stuff like that, do that. Put her back where you found it. Because out here, you know, this is a lollipop, unless you're doing some big long route, the chances are they'll be back this way. Certainly lives up to its name, <laughs> Boulder Pass. Just ahead. Not much work left to do, but some some hikers coming down the hill. Actually, two sets of four. Here's a little panorama as I head up to the pass, looking behind. Hopefully. You know, I always say look behind, but it's kind of smoky today looking back toward Lake Louise. So hopefully on the way out in a couple days, uh, that will improve. And I'll be able to show you that awesome view. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a broken record this summer. If you waited for the smoke to clear, you'd be sitting at home watching television. So that's no fun. A little laying down a little later will be fun. I'll look forward to that. All right, next up. This amazing view of Charmigan. Stunning. <laughs> Isn't that spectacular? 8 or 9k from the car. I'll flush it up what it is. Good day hike. Come on up for lunch if you don't want to stay out. But there's plenty more to see. So I suggest you stay out. There it is. Hello, beautiful. I missed ya. Okay, first pass here, right there, is uh, Packers Pass, and then the second pass, which is a little more well defined over there, is, is um, Deception, and I will come down over that in a couple of days. Over there, if you can see, I'll zoom in for you. All that rain that happened yesterday, look, fresh snowfall at a certain elevation. Ooh. And that's why it's kind of nippy out here, actually. So I did linger a bit, but I think I'm going to get down to camp. Last time I was on this section of trail, I was being chased by a thunderstorm. So get out to camp, get set up, have something warm for a snack, and uh, then I'll tell you all about the trip. It's the classic one from Canadian Rockies Trail Guide, but take you through it. Lots more to see before we get there though. Lots more. Ooh. And the Ptarmigan drains down into 
Baker. And as you can see, still some work to do. Stay high up on this ridge here and uh, peck around these rocks, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, it's deceptively far away because <laughs> uh, the camp's at the other end of the lake, basically. So, but sun's peeking through now. Look, huh? Look at the scenery. It's just gorgeous. I'm going to zoom in for you because there's another trail down there. The actual trail down there. See it? See, the, where's my finger? Right there. Yeah, so that's on the map as the trail, but so is this. The difference is this is high and dry, and that can be extremely wet. So what you might shave off in distance, you're, you're gonna put back in effort. That's probably why the mileages are a little bit off. And I got a horse party coming here. I'll figure out if they want me below them or above them. Yes, the sign is bent, not me. I'm, I'm not bent. Now, by the way, Baker Creek closed. Uh, that's, there's a section trail there, including the old campsite that's closed for, I think, bear habitat, actually. So, there's your intersection, and obviously we're going this way. One more ridge to crest. I mean, this should be pretty leisurely down to the campsite. I think we're well under 3K now that monumental time <laughs> when we arrive in camp after the monumental climb. Woo! It's good for you, Stu. That's what I keep telling myself. As I'm in for you, it looks like quite a crowd up at uh, Deception Pass. Hopefully they're not being deceived. Hard to say. Here we are. A view. Baker Lake. We do have to go down to the far end. It's about two kilometers. We're going to descend and walk along the, the left side of the lake. I hope that sunshine sticks around because I gotta tell you, my, I'm gonna put my gloves on when I get to camp. My hands are nippy. It's uh, the wind is whipping and it's not warm. I feel comfortable other than my hands just getting kind of chilly. So look at that, eh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Lovely. I've seen quite a bit of this, haven't shown you till yet. That's a good size, fella. Not uh, not today's, but within the last three, I'd say, guessing. But yeah. Listen, as I've said, they're out here. Let's be smart. Chances of one wandering into this camp, however, with everybody sold out and people doing their things pretty slim. But uh, if you go out in some of the more remote areas, your chances of seeing one off in the distance increase. And as I've said many times, this summer in particular, on the videos, I have yet to see one in the wild. I've seen them on the road. I've seen black bears in the wild, but never a grizz. It's really, you know, honestly a privilege to see one of them from afar in the back country and far rarer than most people understand. Uh, far less common and really not probably what you should be worrying about. We will talk about an animal you should be worried about a little bit later do that when we get to camp and part of trip planning. Here's the intersection for the morning. I'll come back out and head down that way, up around to Red Deer Lakes. And here we are, Baker Lake. I will uh, head on up in here and uh, as always, show you around. Well, a little tour camp. We'll start here at the tent area. There I am. Tried to pick somewhat of a private and somewhat of a flat spot, but they're all on some pretty good angles. And as I know from thunderstorms in the years past here, they can get mucky. Uh, a couple of tent sites over there. I didn't want to go crowd up against somebody. And then uh, three good ones here. I think that's my favorite down there because you could get uh, a little privacy from uh, folks, depending how you angle your tent. Baker Lake is down here, of course. I think I would suggest, based on what I just did, <laughs> I think I would suggest going to the outlet a little bit. Down there where that little island is, the water starts to go out and flow down and you get a little bit of flow. I still couldn't uh, fill my entire uh, three liters. 
so I'll have to go down a second time. The outhouse is typical Banff. It is actually an outhouse. And it's going to be back through here. Kind of have to go through folks' tenting areas to, uh, to see it. But there's the outhouse. And of course, we save the best for last. Food. Mmm. Eating area. And the bear hangs. I won't make you walk with me. But they're right this way. I could tuck in here if we had to in bed while they're just waiting for some people to clear so I could show you the eating area. Very busy tonight. It'll be sold out. I was lucky to get in. We'll talk about that during trip planning. This is it. Eating area. Picnic tables. There's one tucked back in there as well. And another outhouse. I'm going to show you that in a sec. Uh, yeah, another picnic table over there. Outhouse here. And then the bear storage. Not going to show you the whole tour of the bear storage. Because it's a bit of a walk. Which is typical in Banff. Because of the area we're in. So food storage is down and around over there. Right, really unsettled today, although it's keeping the bugs at bay, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get myself set up and then we'll talk some trip planning. And uh, I'm going to enjoy the view. Look at that. Stunning. Well, trip planning is pretty easy for this one. Up the hill to Baker, around Skokie Mountain tomorrow to, uh, well, first we'll see Red Deer Lakes, then off to Merlin Meadows. And on the following day, the getaway day, through Skokie Lodge, and then back down the hill. Uh, tomorrow should be a little longer than today, which just came in at around 13 kilometers. Um, not quite sure what tomorrow is going to be. I'm going to have to look. <laughs> Somewhere, I think, around 14 when I looked before. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's very... The fact that I am on my third attempt to complete what is really a simple lollipop is, um, is quite remarkable. But, uh, fingers crossed. Um... Oh, listen, earlier too, I mentioned about, um, you know, one animal that you kind of want to avoid, and that's a porcupine. Now, we saw one today in the video, and I got to thinking like, hmm, porcupines, yeah. And I met a group of four who were going downhill, and they said, hey, there's a resident porcupine at Baker Lake. We've named him Gary, <laughs> which is great. But he will be around at night, so I'm going to tuck everything in my tent tonight, with the exception of my food, of course, which I'll hang. But um, porcupines crave salt. They can't retain it. So they're going to chew on your uh, straps of your uh, trekking poles. They're going to chew on your boots. They're going to chew on your backpack. Anything with salt. They'll even get into the outhouses sometimes if they can and chew on your deposits. They're that desperate and hungry for salt. So when you get into these areas that are um, very, very busy, uh, these animals become habituated. Now, it's a couple of day trip. If something were to get chewed, it's easy to huff it down the hill. You know, you, you can tough it out. But if you're back here on a longer trip, Maybe you're setting yourself up here for a big trip, eight, nine days in the front ranges in the random zone. You know, you don't want anything to get chewed up. So the only thing getting chewed up in camp right now, however, is me. The mosquitoes are legendary. Back to the tent, gonna set things up and get ready for supper. Change my mind, I had to come hang my food anyway. So this is how far away it is. <laughs> She's a ways. So I'm going to hang my food and then uh, let's wrap it up. Day one. Ooh. Okay, I'm set. But what do you notice? Yeah. I'll show you something over here. really quickly. You know, places like this do attract a lot of backpackers and this is not criticism you have to learn. But there's a reason that they post this. Please attach the cables to the hooks. Always. Now, if you're an elk coming through here with your big rack on your head and you get tangled up in that, you're dead. Or a deer, or a moose, or any other animal that could get tangled up in these, they're dead. They're going to suffer and die very slowly. I know that just sounds awful, but that's really why they want you to hook these up. So I'm going to actually go ahead and do that um, before I wrap things up. The other thing I noticed at this campsite was that uh, lots of folks are throwing garbage in the pit toilet. So that's another thing. You know, it's, if you're new to this, you're like, well, I can dump food down there. You can't. And, I mean, listen, food's one thing, but then I've also seen a lot of, like, dehydrated meal pouches just dumped down in the pit toilets. That's a no-no for a lot of reasons. Pack it in, pack it out. That's what we do out here. So if you're new to this, just 
you know, do some more reading and Googling and all that kind of stuff. And uh, also try to stay upright in this wind. Holy moly. Wrap it up in a second. Just step down from the bear hangs. Look at this panorama. I should have brought my water bottle because I do have to get some more because I wasn't able to fill it up earlier. And uh, because the way the wind is blowing today, like right down here where we collect our water, lots of debris, so it's a, a filter clogger. So tomorrow I'll have to look for you know, some cleaner water and just do the rinsing. Uh, the bee freeze are very, very good that way. So anyway, yeah, that's just education. That's not complaining. I just, uh, that's part of what we do here. I, certainly what I do, I know you've watched the videos to plan trips. So I don't mind offering a few tips. It's just, uh, we all have to learn out here. And, uh, you know, the more we learn, the better we are, obviously, in life and in backpacking. So I learned today that 14, 13 kilometers, basically straight uphill, is a good day for me. So that's why I had an early supper. I had my chili mac with beef. Ooh! And I'm going to get some more water, had some electrolytes, uh, you know, hydrated and all that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty excited about tomorrow. Now, I just showed you a really quick view here of the ranges when I was talking about the clips. There, look right there. So look past the bear poles to the ranges there. I'm going to go down and make a left and follow that up to Red Deer Lakes campsite first and I'll explain tomorrow why that's significant for me. And then around to Merlin Meadows. It's going to be, I'm super, super excited. So it'll be a very chilly night down to three. Oh, and last thing, I had to repair pretty new Neo Air Xterm today. So when I was out with Anna and Jim recently, the video should be posted when you see this, or sometimes they're out of order. Uh, we found that I found a little puncture, and they're not under warranty for punctures. Uh, I don't know how it happened, not a clue. We put it in the bathtub after the hike, and there, sure enough, she was leaking. So I flashed up to today what I did. Here it is. Yeah, it's a two-step process with a glue dot, once you've identified where the hole is, and then also this... Um, other patch that goes over the glue dot. So I've got, <laughs> I have two sleeping pads in my tent tonight and uh, I've got them stacked one on top of the other to test them both because I simply recall the reason I wasn't using the other one is it might have a slow leak. So I don't know. I look like um, some sort of princess and the pea person uh, with two, two thermal rests stacked up in my tent. Oh. All right, going over to make quick work of these uh, these bear pole latches and to take in this stunning view. Day one on the Skokie Loop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the morning. morning. Day two on the Skokie Loop. Let me zoom back out. Little loon doing his thing this morning. Look at this stunning bluebird we've got going on here. <laughs> oh baby, is it going to be something? Looking down the ranges toward the sawbacks. You can go down that way from here to Badger Pass Junction, all that sort of stuff. Or Block Lakes Junction as well if you turn left, but look at this. I'm not turning left this morning. Well, actually, you know what? I am. I'm turning left and going that way from here. Up toward Red Deer Lakes and uh, <clears throat> obviously to Merlin Meadows. Oops, sorry. But this is just a stunning place to wake up. Why am I down here? Well, I'm being quiet. Because I think I'm one of the first people up. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, it's a busy place. And I have a lot of condensation in my tent this morning. Like, just drips of it because I had to close all four of my flaps just for a little privacy, which is fine. Like, so, it's no big deal, but everything's wet. And, um, you know, got to sleep pretty nice, but then, holy God, porcupine palooza. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I had to be more than one porcupine because they just kept coming back all hours of the night. And then, of course, you know, they come under your vestibule and because of their the way their bodies are and their spikes, it makes this weird brushing noise. And you're like, what's that? And I wear earplugs. So it was, I've never seen anything like this in all my years of hiking. So, uh, I mean, we've all had porcupine issues, but I mean, th there's like, seems to be roving hordes of them here. 
And it's too bad because they're habituated to people and at some point someone's going to get stuck. But anyway, that was just a crazy night. So what I, my, my mistake was I left a pot of water out. This is like, this is at 9 p.m. So it was no big deal. But, you know, I always try to prep my water for coffee the night before so I can get get to get going with a drink of coffee. Well, ding, ding, clang, clang, clang. I look over and there's this porcupine. I'm going to flash up the picture as it went away. There it is. Um, I tried to get a picture while it was under the vestibule. It was just a tiny little thing. Probably a yearling or something, maybe. But then there were others in the camp, too. I'm sure there were more than one porcupine because they all kept coming back. <laughs> Like more than once. It's like, son, if you've been here, you know there's nothing outside for you. Anyway, hopefully nobody got some stuff chewed up last night, but everybody was pretty pretty well aware. So speaking of coffee, it's that time. And then off to Red Deer Lakes and Merlin Meadows. <laughs> On the move pretty early this morning. You know there'll be a reason to linger. It's a busy spot. Folks need the tables for their breakfast, so... I'm always up early. I like to get out early, as you know, and get moving. And it is. <laughs> Hang on. Oh. Little look back. Oh, baby. All right. The first big milestone for me would be Red Deer Lakes. I want to see that campsite. And uh, explain to you why. And then off to Merlin Meadows. And as usual this summer, the... Gaia Topo in meters and the BRMB Canada Trails do not agree on which route to go. So it'll be interesting to see who's right. Oh, good morning. Okay, well, that wasn't just uh, steps from camp, was it? Look at this Wildflower Creek. There's your spur trail. If you're going down that way toward Llewellyn Lake, yeah. So that's a lovely hike. Those guys I met yesterday had done it when I met them here a couple of years ago. And uh, be prepared for some bushwhacking. They showed me some pictures. And the trail can be pretty sketchy around Wildflower, but not unusual in the marshy kind of meadows out here. Looking down toward, I think what is Baker Creek and Pulsatilla Pass. Up and around there, and then down to Wildflower Campsite, as I showed you a second ago. Look at this meadow this morning, though. But you can see what I mean, right? It's uh, willows and grasses and wet bog. You can find all kinds of different tracks down there, as uh, I've shown you in the past. So, But look at that. What a stunning place. Woo! So I just showed you the other direction. This is my direction. And I'm pretty sure I'm looking straight at Pipestone Mountain. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So Red Deer Lake's just up there, you know, before that big head wall of that mountain. So, well, it's not a head wall, but you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, it looks close, but <laughs> work to do. Just, this is going to be one of those mornings, I think, so bear with me. So now I can see the left cyclone uh, mountain, in addition to Pipestone. And uh, there's a famous old warden's cabin there I want to see. Hopefully go buy it. And then this is Fossil Mountain. <laughs> so yes, it could be one of those mornings, but how could you not want to see this? Wow, this valley is just stunning, and what a way to start the day. Whew. Happy. Okay, here's an intersection you're going to want to pay attention to depending where you're going. So you can see there are two gaps up here, one here and the one I'll take over there. If you take the first one to your left, I think it's Cotton Grass Trail. It takes you right up almost to Skokie Lodge. Almost, not quite, but. Uh, yeah, there it is. Anyway, if you go straight, as the sign says, through that little gap toward, well, right behind the sign, really, right, boom, right there. And almost to Skokie Lodge if you're out here day hiking. But if you want to go to Red Deer Lakes, you're going this way. And I want to go to Red Deer Lakes. Now, if you're going to Merlin Meadows, you could cut up through there, and that's a shortcut for sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people in camp today do that. But I want to get the whole thing and see this part for sure. A little backward sign here I'm going to show you. I'm going to guess going to the right takes you to the campsite. And if, uh, well, you continued on 
that way. It's going to take you up to that first pass I talked about. Yep, exactly. So another kilometer to camp, which is what I thought. Well, the lakes anyway. And uh, good. Excellent. Wow, 4.8 kilometers so far this morning. It's been a very easy walk. Again, if you want to take that pass that gets you close to Skokie Lodge and then another kilometer to Merlin Meadows, that's the shortcut. I'm going to take the long cut, which is, sorry if I made you sick, that way. Ooh, some nice clean water close to camp. Good. I can uh, flush out my filter. Oh yeah, look at that. That's beautiful water. Very, very clean. Snow melt, obviously. Hard to see on camera, I understand. Let's go see camp. Now, if there's people there, I'll have to be discreet, but uh, at least you get a bit of it. Trail goes right. Maybe the horses go left. Should be right on top of the campsite. It's funny, it says 500 meters from here. It said 500 meters, 500 meters ago. <laughs> oh, the signage out here. Coming into camp, kind of busy. So I'm going to take a break and... Uh, Show you what I can without interrupting people's mornings. I'll show you the sign here. Camping area to the right, tables and food prep and storage to the left, and then there's a little bit of confusion for me about which way to go. So if I look at Gaia, it takes you down there and then loops you around and on the way to Cyclone. But uh, Garmin, not Garmin, um, Gaia's topo maps show you the um, a different way. So we're going to explore this. There's a little fire pit here, actually. That's cool. Over here. Let's see what the camping area looks like. I like this place. Very treat in. Very nice. My kind of campsite. Soft floor. Yeah. You no know, tent pads. You just. Find a spot and set up. Awesome. All right, back this way. Oh, outhouse. All right, back over this way to the eating area and the bigger hangs. Then I'll take my break. Oh, bear hangs are right there. Okay, up and over. I like this, how the bear hangs are... Uh, well, that's a new one for me. I like how the bear hangs are right by the eating area. Very convenient. All right, time for a break. We'll chat more. <laughs> Gonna head back across the bridge from the eating area. Now, I just helped a couple of guys from Europe. They were heading, well, past the eating area to keep going. There's an old trail there showing up on the maps, but it's boggy and probably pretty hard to find. So what you do, and I was going to do this anyway because uh, I want to see if I can see the cutoff for the Red Deer River Trail. What you do is you come back out here and you head this way. And you're going to bear left if there is an intersection with the old trail. You're going to bear left and huck go right or you're heading down to uh, Divide Creek and <laughs> exploring the front ranges in the random zone. Which is uh, why I'm here. So that's the whole idea right now being out here. So the injury hike, that was supposed to be the Clearwater Red Deer Circuit early in the season. We weren't going to make it anyway, but yeah, so I've got a gap in a little while and um, I could do nine or ten days out here solo alone, starting at Fish Lakes, well, starting at Mosquito and up to Fish Lakes area and then down the Clearwater, across the Divide Creek Trail, and then back up the Red Deer, which is why I kind of just wanted to get a feel for this area, right? And if I swing around slowly, you can see the valley I'd be coming up following the Red Deer River. Hopefully a gradual uphill. <laughs> so that's just something in the back of my mind. And I thought, you know what? I'm doing a lot of the popular trails this year for the channel because I have some time and also because I'm biding my time. You can't do some of these epic tricks, trips rather until August. Basically, late, late July, August, depending on the year. So while you watch some of my shorter videos this summer and some of the one-nighters, don't, don't worry. <laughs> Epic trips are planned. More than one, actually. 
starting in just a few days. So, ah, we are going to meander out in this meadow a bit. There. Red Deer Junction, that's what we're going out to. And then we're going to swing left and go up the next valley, which I can kind of see through, through there. All right, but if you're in the Red Deer Lakes campsite, this is what you want to do. Come back out this way. It seems counterintuitive, but uh, those fellows were headed off into the woods. <laughs> and I said, hey, are you looking for the trail? Look at that valley, huh? That's the Red Deer River Valley. And uh, yeah, it's all calling my name. So anyway, enough of that. That's why I wanted to come here this morning. I'm sure a lot of people I was in camp with, as I said a few minutes ago, will take the shortcut. And go to Skokie Lodge first, and then it's just an easy kilometer to Merlin Meadows. Which is where I'm heading. By the way, 5.9 kilometers tracked from Baker Lake to Red Deer Lakes campsite. I'll flash up on the screen the map here. You can see why it's confusing. Uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, there's just there's a lot going on. But this is where we make our big sweeping left turn and head up the valley, which I'm going to show you in just a second. Pipestone River, Baker Lake. And I wonder if this would be the hiker trail you'd be on coming up the Red Deer River Valley. This is speculation at this point, but when I see something like that, hmm. Well, if all the stars align, time will tell. Just an add on to that thought. So, with regard to that trip, the idea would be to park at Mosquito and do a loop. It's kind of an optional part of it. You could leave a car at, well, right here, Lake Louise at Fish Creek, come out here. But the key would be crossing the Pipestone River. <laughs> That's why you don't do this in July, folks. That would be impossible. So if I can do the trip, I'd like to do a complete loop. I'll just have to uh, monitor water levels and hope there's no rain events and things like that. So hopefully, all this chatter on this video means at some point you'll be able to find the other video, but conditions dictate, always. If you couldn't get across the pipestone going clockwise, now what do you do? You come right back this way, perhaps, and down the hill to Lake Louise, or there may be another out as well. So these are the things I'm used about is walking on the trail by myself. deviated off the trail a little bit because I just spied this solar panel and what I'm going to assume yeah is it is an electric fence <laughs> don't go this way interesting hmm this area is super confusing really confusing you have to watch for those arrows and hiker signs I mean, I just went and did like a, almost a 180 to get back on this, so that's why the GPS is always helpful. Ah, it's just yeah, super confusing through here. Great shot there of Molar Mountain. <sighs> Great memories too of the Molar Loop with the girls. Not far from coming out of this, right at Merlin Meadows Campground, I think. I haven't shown you much because it's not been steep, but I've been picking. Picky, rooty, rocky, boggy, and the occasional deadfall, which is no big deal, but yeah. After most of the day, let's say 10 kilometers of what I consider pretty easy walking, the last couple have been a little more work. So, almost there, which is great. <laughs> well, 
coming into Merlin Meadows. Let's see if Merlin has any magic for us tonight. I'm going to, uh, oh, eating area. I'm going to set up, get organized, and I'll show you around. Hi there. What you doing? Where should I set up my tent? Any idea? No? All right. Eat some more grass. Time for a little tour of camp. The easiest to access water that I've found so far is very close to the eating area, which the last picnic table is here. So you get to the last table, keep left. There's a little spur trail that goes down there. It's very easy to follow and I've got a, um, water at that bend. Here's to where I was a second ago when I was getting water, pointing back to the campsite. And of course it's pretty clean and swift. And there's even a little beach there if you wanted to go out and have a little lay in the sun. Maybe even clean up, although there's not a lot of privacy on these trails to clean up. Always something to think about when you're packing your kit. So, eating area. Come walk through here with me. I won't make you walk the whole way because there's quite a distance, but there's the bear hang. Mine is up there already, as is someone else's. There is a two-person tent down by the meadow in a great spot. Uh, again, as I mentioned yesterday, please fasten these when you leave. Um, a deer or an elk or something like that, uh, or moose with, with antlers can get caught in there pretty quickly and it doesn't end well. And again, it's not a criticism. It's just a matter of, you know, a lot of new folks on trails like this and it's just a matter of learning. So that's all I'm trying to do. Ah, uh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> okay, good junction of Deception Pass. I kind of read that earlier, like Deception Pass is not a kilometer from here. Well, that's a bit of work. And the picnic table there. And I'll, uh, I'll walk you back to the tent area. I won't bore you with it. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Main trail, of course. I'm just going to cut in here. Lots of little cut-ins because you know what? Boom, there's a the campsite. So this is my kind of place. Very sort of random without the pads. And you know, even somebody with a single person, even my duplex could probably tuck in there. A couple of different uh, fire areas over here. Show you those really quickly. See there's even more tent pads right around the fire pit. So yeah, see there's two areas here, two pits with a nice view and then back this way slowly straight ahead of me is the outhouse and I'm gonna keep walking on pretty much a diagonal and uh, show you where I've picked kind of down on the edge of the meadow try not to hear too much noise tonight and hopefully no porcupine hello there dear how are you you gonna be my friend today? Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, so down we go here. You can see my crap straight ahead. <laughs> well, let's talk about DCF tents. Mine was soaked, as I mentioned this morning, because of the uh, condensation from having all four flaps closed for privacy. And I tend to want to put them up to let them dry. But the bottom was soaked. And 10 minutes later, the bottom's now dry, so I'm going to go ahead and set up. Then, I'll show you the meadow, and uh, the lay of the land for the night. It's through there. <laughs> okay, as promised, quick shot of the meadow. Don't want to disturb anybody if they're here. Just walk through what could be another beautiful camping site. I didn't take it, so I didn't want to intrude on anyone's privacy. But uh, let's not go to their campsite. Let's cut over this way. That is a great spot, by the way. That would be the number one spot here. And I wandered around a bit, not seeing any more like it. Because there's your view. Well, if I just step out a little further. Yeah, there's your view from that campsite. And then there's your view. Oh man, what a gorgeous afternoon. I'm going to show you my view here from the eating area in a second. Just enjoying some uh, peanut butter Ritz crackers in the proper size. Can't get these in Canada. Get the smaller ones. And the smaller ones tend to turn like dust. <laughs> Excuse me, after a couple of days in your pack. So we get the cheese ones, which are nice and salty, but uh, mom and dad got these for me in the States. And uh, that's pretty cool. Also having a little cheers for my birthday. It's, um, oh, you will never see this, electrolytes. <laughs> cheers. Mm. 
What a beautiful, peaceful place. And I've been keeping my voice down a bit on this hike. It's because there's so many people around and I don't know who's around right now, but but it's it's peaceful too. Like, listen. Had to have the bug go by. Oh, speaking. <laughs> if the name of the campsite has lake or meadow in it, expect bugs. Holy mackerel. This is epic as well. Anyway, I had a lovely little rest and uh, just enjoying the peace and quiet. It's the first birthday I've had oh, without friends or family, really. Um, my dad's birthday was yesterday and the girl's mother's birthday was also yesterday. So for 20 years, these were a couple of big crazy days. And, um, you know, everybody gets older, things change. But uh, I can't think of a better place to be on my first birthday alone than sitting right here in this glorious space. Um, half a mind to go up to Skokie Lodge just to see if they serve tea to the hikers. I'm going to try to find out. And if I do find out yes or no, here's the answer. Um, it's a kilometer up, kilometer back without a backpack. Like we're talking 30 minutes round trip if the conditions are okay. So just sitting here pondering that instead of laying around for the afternoon completely. <laughs> Which is never a bad thing either. So anyway, just wanted to, uh, little cheers. Happy birthday, Stu. And, uh... Here comes my view. Yeah. Yeah, good birthday indeed. One last look from the meadow uh, tonight as I uh, head back from the river, had a beautiful supper over at the eating area. Well, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Had I remembered what day it was, I probably would have bought some more comfort food, like my little ones I'm making up now with the uh, with the stovetop stuffing and uh, chicken and potato and all that stuff. But no, I had a mountain chili. <laughs> and it was vegetarian. And I couldn't even finish it. So it's all fine, no big deal. Um, beautiful, quiet afternoon here. The folks have rolled in now, but still we're spread out pretty good. You're going to hear lots of things in these campsites. You have to be prepared for that, but I do prefer this one, and I prefer Red Deer Lakes to uh, Baker Lake, where you're kind of kind of on top of one another. So this is a stunning meadow, as I showed you earlier today. Packers Pass, that way. We'll table that for another time. And I'm going that way, up to Skokie Lodge, and then uh, past Skokie Lodge, which is about a kilometer. Another 3.4 up to the pass, and I expect a pretty good climb. And then, of course... It's basically all downhill to the car. So that'll be great. So I'm going to turn in early and get an early start so I can get you some really great shots before any showers roll in or smoke or anything like that. So it's a great day, really great day. And uh, there's the perma smile. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Uh, good evening. You know, we already wrapped up today. Did you have something to add? No? All right, just wanted to make sure, because, you know, we did already wrap the day up. All right, carry on. Good morning, day three of the Skokie Loop. Oh, is this the day I finally finish it? Let's find out. First, Skokie Lodge, pretty easy walk, about a kilometer, but then 3.4K up to Deception Pass. And from what I think, it's going to be about 3K and 300, well, just under 300 meters of elevation gain. <sighs> it's going to be, it's going to be a sweat fest. A little groggy this morning, as you can probably tell, just another one of those restless nights and uh, a little bit wet in the tent, but not too bad. I had all four zips open, all four flaps, so it's still wet, but not as bad. So yeah, a little quick getaway morning, quietly, and let's go see this beauty. All right, just leaving camp. I uh, wanted to show you this. There is another bear hang on the Skokie Lodge side of the campsite, right up in here. And if you look over here, there is another outhouse. I meant to show you that yesterday, but knew I was walking this way this morning, so there you go. <clears throat> Both ends have bear hangs and two privies. Now, I did do this walk yesterday up to Skokie. It's very easy. A little mild uphill, but no big deal. And we do have the hiker afternoon tea, or whatever they call it. <laughs> oh, sorry, a little shaky. Hang on there. Ah, there we are. So here's a picture of what's on offer. I wasn't really into the boozy stuff, so I just had a look around. 
and came back to camp. So, very quickly, seconds for you, we'll be at Skokie Lodge. Made quick work of that. Although she's chilly, my hands are cold. <clears throat> but I can see the sun up ahead. Skokie Lodge. Let me give you a panorama when I get up here. Can hear a generator running up there. Must be to help with morning breakfast service. Met some folks yesterday who uh, were staying here. They all kind of met at dinner, I guess, and went out on a day hike together. That's what can happen. So, you know, if backpacking like I do is not your thing, get out anyway and experience these amazing places. If you can afford to, this is a great place. Well, there it is. Folks are already out enjoying the morning. Nice little view over here, just for a couple of people to sit down. Right there. Oof. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of flat and then the climb begins. I'll go up here and show you the plaque. As promised, read that. And one last look back at the view from Skokie. Really beautiful. And a gorgeous morning. So, oh, Deception Pass, named because the guy that was involved here with the lodge kept being deceived. He thought he was always at the top, but it kept going. Oh, that's not something you want to read in the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide, now, is it? But I did. 3.4 kilometers to the top. We have the benefit now of knowing, so. As I mentioned, I showed you yesterday, lots of trails out here. So we're going that way to Fish Creek, 14.5, eh? That's funny, I mentioned it, or measured it rather at about 15 yesterday from camp, so. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, so Deception Pass showing 3.1. That's probably about right. You want to go right here if you're doing Deception or Packers. The other way takes you back, <laughs> kind of out to where we've already been. So always pay attention. It's always good to have a GPS too. Gaia, you can download it for free for goodness sake, just to give you some peace of mind. So, all right. Finally some views. Holy moly, has this climb been relentless? I mean relentless. Reminds me of Badger Pass going up the wrong side of it. But that's what I could book. I think if I were gonna do this again, or if you're gonna do it, maybe go the other way, go clockwise. Uh, yeah, because holy mackerel. Steep and relentless, but finally a few views to uh, occupy the mind. Interesting yet another false summit. <laughs> Thus the name. I'm sure he named it from this side. Yeah. A couple false summits here. Whew. Okay, that's gotta be the last false summit. False summit. Whew, man. Pretty sure the pass is uh, is right up there in that little notch. Still some work to do. But the end is in sight. <laughs> About to crest. I'm going to assume that giant marker is for skiers in the winter maybe. And that looks like it used to hold a sign perhaps. Let's walk up here together. And see what we see. Deception Pass. Oh boy, what a climb first thing in the morning. A good four and a half kilometers worth. Oh. I'll show you that side on the way down after I take a break. But let's look at this. I already showed you the wall of Jericho. And look at that. Good morning. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Worth every step. I just sit here and had a break and I want to show you something. Oh, been down here. Let me talk about fragile alpine elevation. Look at that. Look at these dainty flowers. Now let me give you some perspective. That's my finger. And those are these little dainty flowers. 
and they're up here in the middle of this barrenness. I mean, it's just, this is what you gotta stop and smell the roses type stuff, guys. Really, you do. Don't be in a rush. Look at that tiny, tiny little plant <laughs> in the middle of this barren landscape. Life is really something, isn't it? I mean, it really is. I was hoping we'd have clearer views on the way back. <laughs> oh, good Lord, look at that. <laughs> look at the trail down there, too. Can you see that off to the right? I'll zoom in for you just in case. Here we go. See it? Trail's down there. I know where I'm going, but there it is. Pretty neat. Wow. Ptarmigan Lake, Boulder Pass. Next stop, just down there. There's really no marker to discern the trail coming down, but you know you're heading down this way, right? So just kind of bear to the right and you'll pick up the track. I think a lot of people might be tempted to go down this drainage. Don't. <laughs> Trail's off to the right, and she's steep. I know I said I might do it the other way, but this would be one heck of a climb, although it looks just a lot shorter. A lot shorter. Steep, though. Hey, you got to go up and you got to go down when you're out here. Part of the game. I mean, going, <laughs> going up for me is all heart rate, calves and thighs, basically. You know, like your major leg muscles, whatever they all are. And going down is basically just balance and knees. I think we're probably all the same that way, but two different experiences. And the rest of this hike will be mostly balance and knees. Like right here. You're kind of leaning backwards, you know. But, oh yeah, look at that. Well, as I make the turn to Boulder Pass, one last look at Tarmigan Lake. Oh man, spectacular. And I don't mean this personally, Tarmigan Lake, but I hope I don't see you soon. If you've watched the video, you know I'm thinking of doing the Clearwater Red Deer Circuit in the gap that I have. And uh, well, if I can't get across the Pipestone River, this will be my bailout. So nothing personal. Let me give you a shot up here. Just past lots of hikers. Some look like day hackers, but my goodness, they must have started early. And then there's some folks that look like they're backpacking, although I think poor old dad has the biggest backpack. And that's quite a climb. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little break here. My favorite set of rocks on what is aptly named Boulder Pass. Let's go up and have a look here before I take a break and eat some food. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's bouldery. You can see a little shortcut down there, and I advise you not to take these. See what happens. Uh, a lot of places, you know, you'll see switchbacks and stuff, and even on the skyline, there were little signs that said, this is not the trail. And the idea there is if you cut the switchbacks or cut down like that, you're now creating a little, well, a little outlet for water. And it erodes the hillside and eventually erodes the switchbacks. So just something to do, stick to the main trail, make the guys and gals who come out here and do all this hard work, make their life a little easier. Just had a nice break at Boulder Pass. And uh, I don't know, what's the next milestone? Halfway hit? <laughs> well, I guess it's whatever we see. Had some people just in front of me on that old road that I'd camped with last night. And I was kind of pushing into them. So there is an old hiker trail that cuts off and around and goes to the Halfway hut. Uh, you can see footprints. It is well used. I know the trail anyway. Uh, if you're comfortable doing that, go ahead. I do recommend having some sort of map, but I know this trail, so that's no big deal. And I'll intersect with them up here. Just a couple of minutes. This is actually a much nicer walk anyway. All right, little rock hop back there, but well worth it. I get to wash off my boots. And now I'm back. Much nicer walk through there, to be honest, in this road, you know, like, although that does take you up to a Hidden Lakes campsite, as you know, I showed you on the way in. All right, onward. Back in the woods for a while, as I head down to the 3.9 kilometer mark, 
for the road. Be like this for a while. And more people. Coming back into the ski hill area, almost to the exit of this road, and uh, some gorgeous views. Clear, clear, beautiful views today. Exited the uh, forest. Now just walking toward this beautiful picnic table. I'm gonna have a break before we hike together down three and a half kilometers down the road. And uh, it's gonna be easy, as I said, I think coming up. <laughs> you look forward to that at the end of the trip. And uh, yeah, so we'll break and then we'll head down and well, then we'll wrap it up. Well, I was just about to start the video rolling and uh, a bunch of ladies ended up at the, uh, well, where I was and I had just seen a Parks Canada truck with a Parks Canada horse trailer. Here's the picture. So, last time I was out here, I actually saw them go into Cyclone on horseback, which was awesome to see backcountry folks using horses. I think I've talked about that before. So I'm not going to, I mean, I'm going to guess. I'm going to think they probably have gone back into Cyclone, which I missed on this trip. Maybe the next one. Haha. <laughs> well, actually, maybe the next one, but really good to see horses in the backcountry. We need a lot more of it. We really do. Well, speaking of horses. Hello, beautiful. Are you all alone? Are you all alone in there by yourself? Hi. Aren't you pretty? Oh, no, you're not alone at all. Let's go have a look at your friends. Zoom in, there's the gang. A little further for you. All enjoying your day. Look at that. Nice to see, as I just said. Oh, there we go. Ah, the familiar sight of cars. So I'm going to go to mine and uh, unload my gear and then we're going to find out let's all say it together three two one how's the hike <laughs> well found a seat in the shade some folks getting ready to go out so i tuck myself over here everything's in the car i'm ready for a shower <laughs> the stink is real this is the shirt this is the famous shirt and uh, i wore this one because i was hiking alone when i'm out with others in a couple of days i'll wear the new shirt i got which is made of wool which is a miracle to me that that's even possible so, wow, how's the hike? Listen, you saw the scenery. What do I have to say? It's just stunning. It does take you some work. Deception Pass is work. And the old road here, even coming down was work. I'm like, is this over yet? Because your feet are clomping out in front of you. Bang, bang, bang. And all that kind of stuff. But uh, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I did it for the channel and for you. Because um, now you can see kind of that it gets confusing back there, right? A couple other things I want to point out. First of all, it's 2023. There are porcupines both at... Um, at Baker and at Merlin. And Merlin chewed some people last night because I think people thought, well, there must only be one at Baker. They're everywhere and they are chewing stuff. So hang it or put it in your tent depending on the space that you have available. Um, speaking of space, oh, people, there's so many people out there and so many young people and that makes me happy. I'm really glad to see so many young people out in the trails, like university students and groups of friends like that. That's the future of our sport, and I was super happy to see it. Uh, they all were super engaged in what they were doing, and it just, it really was amazing. Now, you think, oh, Stu doesn't like a lot of people at camps. That's not true. Um, I do seek solitude, but, 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 it's great to see people, it's great to see young people, and if you're new to this, and you're still like, oh, I don't know if I want to sleep in the woods. I'm scared or whatever. These are great campsites to try it because you're going to have so many people. You're going to hear voices all the time. You're not going to feel alone and you're not going to feel worried. Um, and so this is a good thing. And it's good, as I said, for the future of our sport. But because there are so many people, bring something to wash up with. Typically on a long hike, um, even the Snake Indian Falls one, which I'm not sure if it's already come out or it's coming out after this. As I said, they tend to go up as quickly as I could edit them. Some take longer than others. Like I was able to just get down to the birthday bath every night and it's wonderful. Out there, not a chance. So my suggestion is bring some wipes. It's going to be hot and sweaty. You're going to want to feel good. And I, you cannot count on water uh, or privacy to clean up in the way that most of us do when the remote backcountry. So anyway, listen, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, as always, just leave them in the comment section below. And it's just thank you for spending my birthday with me, right? That was yesterday. And next year, if I'm alone on my birthday, I'm going to bring a better meal. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, I'm jiggling the camera here, but uh, perma smile, right? Oh, a day and a half till the next one. I better get going. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.